are here in the garden with Griffin Dunn. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. In the rain. It held know, out for us starting. all morning. So. As soon as I walked out. But you have a new movie, The Discoverers. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I absolutely loved it. It's filmmaking at its best. Tell me how you got involved. Well, um, I was sent the script, just like a normal thing. But what was unusual about it was that it was a, a, a part that carried the picture. What did you enjoy the most about uh, making the movie? I, I loved the, the kids, the, the, the kids who played my kids. That's it? No enthusiasm? Dad, you sure we're all related. And Stuart Margolin was one of the first famous people I became friends with, you know, when he was in yeah. doing Rockwood Do Files. It's, um, hold that thought for a second. I was just going to get yeah. you a tissue and you didn't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So let's... Oh, let's just make so, the most of it. All right. Here we are. We're in close court. Boy. <laughs> holding an umbrella. This is You and me, Stephanie. <laughs> huh? Here we are. Good thing we know each other. <laughs> All right, the things you do. Wait, I want to make sure you don't get wet back here. Okay. Yeah, watch All your right. little. Uh, there we that go. Thing. All right, you got now it. Now it's really coming down. All right. Okay. So, so you were talking about you were talking about uh, working on the film with a lot of really talented actors. Um, was it hard? Is it hard to take direction? since you've done it no, so well yourself? Not at all. And, um, uh, you know, you, you always take a risk with a first-time filmmaker. Okay, yeah, there we are. Okay. <laughs> get it more on me. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll hold it so I can get it more on me. Okay, there you Wait, go. Hold on. <laughs> oh, there it's we go. It's a tree. All right, okay. there we go. Okay. okay. There we go. All right. You, had to, you have to have the smallest umbrella. This is, um... This oh, it's is, Greg Jarland's. You know, I actually have a umbrella, but I don't have a stand for it. Okay, wait, That's I think right. it's holding up. Okay, so we working with a first-time director, you always take a So, yeah, uh, um, you, you take a risk, you know, when you're working with a first-time director. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes they will have written something that's really good and become very possessive about wanting to, to direct it. Um, uh, sometimes um, it's not in their best interest, mm -hmm. you know. Justin was not in that category. He was very... Um, he was very film savvy. He had, was so prepared. He'd been thinking about this movie obviously for years and years. Mm -hmm. So so when you're with an assured director, it doesn't matter how many times um, they've, they've made movies a lot. Mm -hmm. As long as you get the sense you know what they're doing. Oh my God, you guys. We are here with here we are. Griffin Dunn. Take two. You are a true multi-hyphenate. Mm -hmm. you, you're an actor, you're a producer, you're a director. I want to talk about the acting first. So you're just giving up? No, I'm just getting started. I knew very early on into the script that it was something I really wanted to do. It just resonated with me in so many ways. It's been kind of great to be that involved as an actor um, throughout a movie. I take it you're a history buff? I thought the tone was kind of great because it was never, you know, self-pitying and whiny or, uh, you know, it was like managed to be funny. Oh no, oh no, oh no, no, oh no, 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 no. You're well aware of um, the realities of, you know, not having a trailer, and we change in front of each other into our buckskins, you know, or behind flats, you know. <laughs> so, so you had to, you had to really get along with your fellow actors. The wardrobes are banging around in those bean boots. <laughs> it's yeah, hilarious. yeah. No, I know. It was a, a lot of dead animals we wore. <laughs> no animals were harmed in the filming. Though, they were I'm harmed sure. much earlier. I want to talk um, a little bit about some of your older movies because you have been in some very memorable films. The first one, a total gem, total classic, After Hours. I produced it with Amy Robinson as a script we found from a from a Columbia student, and uh, I managed to get Martin Scorsese. And it was the very first totally all-consuming part I ever had as an actor, and, and then became a totally all-consumed producer, you know, till it was, um, you know, set for release. It's something I'm particularly proud of. It really kind of changed my life that movie. Yeah. What was it like filming it? I mean, it's like a huge role for you. It was a huge role that was all shot at night over a period of like eight weeks, and um, you know, we were like in a just an alternate universe that entire time. Uh, American Werewolf in London. First movie I ever did. Never even read for it. Just, just uh, met with John. Talked for about 10 or 15 minutes about, I don't know what, I don't even remember. Wasn't even the movie. Just wanted to know if I was claustrophobic. We weren't allowed to read the script or know anything about it. I didn't even know the title of it. And then um, and he offers me the part, sends the script over. And, and I was in London about two weeks later. Okay, who's that girl? Uh, crazy, crazy experience, um, you know, with Madonna. We just had a lot of laughs on that movie. It didn't turn out so great, but we really had fun making it. Her celebrity was so intense. I mean, like, you know, we, everything that we shot outdoors, we had to re-record because there were so many helicopters. Wow. 
um, and there were just paparazzi everywhere you'd look. I just, I just would see lenses everywhere. And I, I remember for weeks after, I'd still like, it was such an alarming thing, I'd still keep looking around, like think things were pointing in my direction. What do you think about when you, when you see yourself in those films all those years ago? Oh, I'm proud of the work. Um, you know, I think, gosh, that guy's young. <laughs> <laughs> I try, exactly the same, I, are you I try kidding? To get, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll get vain and <laughs> morbid. Okay, we're going to fast forward to Dallas Buyers Club. What's it like being part of a, such an Oscar-winning, powerful well, film? Well, you don't know that at the time. Once you get there and you see Matthew oh. in person, mm -hmm. and you see his translucent skin and the outline of his skull underneath mm -hmm. his hairline, you know, and you see this commitment that he's not just emotionally, but physically put himself through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really raised the bar. Mm -hmm. You want to you just get it right. My sections of the movie was the last part. When we finished, Matthew would be able to have his first solid meal mm -hmm. in months. So uh, I kind of just wanted to not screw it up and get him to the catering <laughs> truck. I had read that you became a producer so you could cast yourself in yeah, roles. Is that true? That is true. Um, yeah, when I was 23 with my partners at the time, uh, Mark Metcalf and Amy, Robinson, we optioned, well, all three of us were out of work, and we optioned a, a book with the idea that we would all give ourselves starring roles. Well, it's so naively <laughs> sweet. Um, but it was that naivete that actually uh, made it possible for us to make a movie when we'd had absolutely no background uh, in production and had no relationships with studios. And I think we only got it made because we had no idea what we were doing, so we had no idea what to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. uh, Needless to say, we didn't get starring roles. I think a lot of people don't really know quite what a producer mm -hmm. does. How would you describe a producer's well, role? The kind of producer um, um, I am is material driven. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking for stories. But it's also then a producer puts all those things together mm -hmm. to make sure that everybody does the greatest work. And then after doing it for several years and watching, you know, being responsible for, you know, hiring incredibly good actors and watching them play on the set with each other and then watching directors just be able to immerse themselves. I started to feel like the caterer <laughs> who wasn't invited to his own party. Um, and I felt very much sidelined, you know, even though, you know, I, I, I had everything to be proud of for being responsible for bringing all these people here. I kind of wanted to be, you know, in, in the ring more. You're also a very accomplished director of some big budget Hollywood comedies starring some pretty big leading ladies. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a turning point in the business where, where, where studios, um, this would be in the 90s and early early 2000s, they would, they gave me a lot of money, especially mm -hmm. for my first studio movie, to make a romantic comedy. It, it was in a way that they spent money much more um, freely than, than they all do now, you mm -hmm. know, it, and uh, so I was really fortunate to be right on the tail end of that. The bigger the budget, the more the pressure? Uh, I think the more the toys, and the, <laughs> more, the more the possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's pressure that, uh, particularly if it doesn't make money, you, you're, you're, you feel deeply responsible. Mm -hmm. There's much more pressure to make it a commercially successful movie. But you know, big, small, it's still, you're a slave to the, to the light. Um, you know, the, all the problems are still the same. The actors are the same, give you the same commitment. It's just more comfortable, I guess. The food is better uh, on the big budget movies. I want to change gears for a quick second and ask you about your dad, the late great writer Dominic Dunn. Tell me uh, your life and your work, how he's influenced you. Well, you know, he's always been so supportive. One thing about that ties into this movie that when he was broke and when he'd uh, lost everything, um, he got in a car and this little crappy little car breaks down in Oregon along the coast and it, in front of a cabin, you know, like rental, weekly rental cabins, where he stayed and lived for a year in this cabin and taught himself how to write. And, and uh, when we're shooting the last scene in this movie, we're on the coast, it's two miles from where that cabin was. Oh my God. Yeah, uh, which is just a incredible coincidence. Maybe you felt his presence, maybe. Absolutely. That. No, it was, it was, you know, when I play a guy who's going through a lot and midlife crisis and all that, so it was a, it was an interesting emotional and unexpected tie-in. Well, thank you, Griffin. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been amazing. Oh. Pleasure. Luck. Thank you, Steph.